What's the beauty? Oh, bang, he gets now by Takiri. Lovely rugby there from Greer. What a tremendous effort. He'll just put his head down over he goes. of the Asia Rugby 7 Series here at Namdong ASEAN Stadium in Incheon, Korea. It is a perfect autumn's day in Korea. Conditions could not be better. Beautiful, crisp, clean air, beautiful blue sky overhead and a pitch to match the occasion. The grass is ready. The players are on standby. It is the second tournament of three. Here's the story after the men's competition in Hong Kong. Japan lead the way with Hong Kong in second. Sri Lanka on eight points. The Philippines, a bit of a surprise package on seven. Then China, who were beaten pretty, well, just to the death there, I think, by the Philippines. Remember the long-range try they took in to take China out. China's Taipei on for Korea, two, but we are expecting a bigger effort from the home side this weekend. To the women's series points table. Japan leading China. Kazakhstan, always a threat in third. Hong Kong looking to improve their performance from their home tournament. Sri Lanka, Thailand, that'll be interesting to see where those two teams end up after this weekend. Singapore and Korea bring up the rear. All oh, is just about in readiness here at Namdong Asiad Stadium in Incheon. As we get ready for game one of the Asia Rugby 7 Series, it's Kazakhstan taking on Thailand for the tournament opener as both teams flood the field. It's the fourth game for both of these teams. Kazakhstan, a very, very powerful group of women. They'll be looking to improve their positions. We're looking at the Kazakhstan team and of them, I'll bring your attention to the referee now, Patrick Kwok of Hong Kong. There is Thailand, an incredibly courageous team, and they perform very well in the Asian Games. Underway with game one, Thailand, Kazakhstan, and straight away, Kazakhstan with a deepish kickoff able to put Thailand under early pressure in front of their own line and the ties known for their kicking game try to use some evasive tactics as now Kazakhstan seek the wide channels big run coming in and first try opening try to Kazakhstan <laughs> Robic. That's Lady already six tries so far in the series. Just keeps adding to that remarkable tally. She's a try scoring machine for this Kazakhstan side. Conversion not really threatening the posts. Kazakhstan lead. 5 0. Look at that. Big lady onto small lady. And try as she might in the end. Karotic too big, too strong. There she is again, chasing the restart. Opposite side of the field. Thailand now under the gun. As the Kazakhstan. Defence tries to push them into some early errors in their own territory. Thailand, though, bravely carry the ball away. Now, ball in hand. Thailand running at Kazakhstan's side. So they can change their attitude. A turnover. Quick ball away. Karotic. Spills back. And Thailand need to shape up their defence. Could be some gaps already opening up out wide. They 
press the issue out wide through number 10, Koshibaeva. Now they spin it back. Kazakhstan looking for space. Good defense from the demure, diminutive, I should say, Thailand side. Still pressing defense. Forcing some errors from Kazakhstan. But they maintain the ball. In the field. Thailand, look at this ha harrowing defense from the Thais. It's a trademark of their play is Karotic. Breaks away. And they start driving at that same channel. It's terrible. The difference in body size is that woman. Karotic gets broad. She gets free again. Try number seven in the series. And try number two within four minutes for the Kazakhstan destroyer. Second try today. Terrific effort. Thailand getting into their work pretty well. 10 0 they lead with the kick to come. The kick just a little bit wider than usual. There's people joining us on Facebook Live. Hello and welcome to the broadcast coming to you. It's a beautiful day here in Incheon. So we just look. And in the end, they created too much pressure through their channel at the breakdown. And Karotic makes her way in for the second try today. The restart. Floats it high, wide, handsome, but quite short. Kazakhstan looking to be playing with some confidence now. Great tackle from number five, Ratana Porn. Forces the issue. Referee Kwok from Hong Kong. The officials looking resplendent, resplendent in pink today, I might add. Listen, listen, listen. Wait for the ball. Push. Make sure you find up straight, okay? Go straight. That's a nice, decisive Crouch. management of the plate by referee Pop. The team's Sit. receiving the message. Court with the standards are set at the beginning of the day. Thailand now, they break away. Ball back on the inside. Oh, not much of that. Thailand might have broken the line, but it's Kazakhstan. Ball in hand now for Yakaleva. Still, they find their way through a direct route for Kazakhstan. Seems to be the most, most profitable early on. And they're able to put Thailand under significant pressure, particularly when they line them up and stand them still. Look at this. Pick up and drive by Anna Yakovleva. Fine. See the physical difference. Set. The two forward packs, good quick heel. Backwards, play on. It's Tindra manages to get the ball back. Thailand, Thailand gather around and try and exit their own 22. Get it out again. Goes to ground. Ratana Porn. Tries to relieve some pressure. This might go on the foot again, though. No? Great play to get it to hand. Ratana Porn, heavied by the Kazakhstan defence. Manages to get it clear. Advantage to Thailand. And That's a penalty late. for Thailand. Late charge is the call. Thailand, down here. Yeah. Tackle. So the... Penalty infringement, late tackle on the kicker, impeding their progress to Kazakhstan. challenge for the ball again. Don't cross the line. Stay here. And it's the header gets ready to blow on the opening seven minutes. Thailand float one deep over the back. Kazakhstan come up with a great little play between the legs and Kazakhstan threatened off against the line. Turnover by Thailand. 
see which way they can take it. In the end, it looks like they're pretty clean to close out the hill. They are very keen to close out the half. And referee Kwok blows half time in this opening game between Kazakhstan and Thailand. Kazakhstan go to the break, leading 10 points to nil. Two opening tries from number 12, Ludmila Karotit, has been probably the talking point as the Thai squad gather around. Really, they were the find of the tournament in the Asian Games. The performance down there was probably very difficult to call for a lot of it. Sevens connoisseurs and Asian rugby. They've been slowly on the improve, increasing their ability, their skill sets. They've always been an incredibly courageous side, the Thailand ladies. Albert? Yeah. Anything? Albert? Defence has okay. always been a on. trademark of their game. On the other side of the coin, though, the power of Kazakhstan and everyone. And the women's draw respects that. They are just absolutely amazing when they start taking it straight at the line. They do have the dimension of pace out wide. They've got a lot of experience. They play some very, very simple rugby. It's usually quite error free. And when they get the gallop on straight at the opposition, there are very few teams, if any, that can hold these Kazakhstan women back. Second half, ready to get underway. You can tell that the sun is pretty striking. In Thailand. Restart the ball just bounces awkwardly for a start for Kazakhstan. And loose pass puts them down inside their 22, but they break out wide. Single defender left, and this could be Kazakhstan straight off the bounce. Rathanapon chases, chases hard, and makes well pushed at the line and might have even put the player into touch. It's Full grounding. Very difficult to tell whether the grounding got in or not, but my word, talk about last ditch effort. Ratana Pawn yes no. throws. Look at this. Oh, 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 the referees have got a job to do now. Looking on is Pros Karina. A little bit of maintenance being done on the corner flag, which is pretty standard for a rugby game, really, isn't it? Free quark, they're looking, they're waiting, they're watching. Tremendous stuff, great drama. Ratana Porn. Had to go a long, long way to track down Roscarina. As you can see, she's closing on her with every stride, but running out of territory and <laughs> just a beautifully timed little shove at the line well can't say she didn't use her arms just wait tma decision pending they're looking they're waiting they're watching the call no is coming tries. in and no try is the call so five meter line out time off wait there in the yeah, end, yeah, fine, fine, a try saving effort from Ratana Porn. And Thailand defend their line. Ratana Porn at a halfback and they're looking for options. This little nudge through the line has forced Kazakhstan back. It's so seriously good tackling by Thailand again. And on the outside, drifts number 10, Koshi Baeva. Again, another wrecking ball from Kazakhstan. Klochnikova lets the ball loose over the top. Nurmatova 
takes the ball down. That was number two, but the ball is loose and the advantage goes to Thailand. Seems an action pack. Minute and 20 Here, seconds please. since the half time. Blue. Kazakhstan. Here, please. Wonderful to have you joining the broadcast on Facebook Live from Sri Lanka. Fans from Hong Kong, all over the Asian region tuning in. Great you can join us today. It's wonderful to bring you such glorious pictures out of Incheon as Ratana form gets the ball away. And Thailand inchworm their way down the pitch. Now number 11, Takiova is the speedster for Kazakhstan. Not much being able to stick here so far for Kazakhstan. That was a good ball, but it went to ground, unfortunately. Stepan Yuga. And Thailand have battled their way down. So just look at that. Well, not too many excuses. For that one going to ground. It's a handling error. Bit of an effort area too five. for the player. Five blue. Number five. Some changes being made already. It's a very, very nice day. And the air conditions are actually pretty reasonable, but then again, 90% of the people here are sitting down. Come back on. Crouch. The players are out there putting in the effort. Fine. Ratanapur, Thailand. A big shove coming in from Kazakhstan causes the Thais some problems, but they manage to shuffle away. Loose hit and bind early. Very clear Binding. ruling from referee Kwok. Unhappy with Hold. the bind in that scrum. As a result, Thailand get to operate again. Two passes, the timing. Knock on into the touch. pass goes behind the player. The Option timing's just the off. There were some opportunities the there for Thailand to really put some pressure on Kazakhstan line out. wide. Line out, please. Hold here. out restart just outside the 22 as you can see it's the Kazakhstan end of the field and quickly around and moving the ball well into space it was great evasive work now here comes the fly up for Kazakhstan number 11 Daria Tachiova plays it back well Kazakhstan again, now yeah, they thunder in close to the 15 metre line. Putting on. Just couldn't present the ball. Referee Kwok blows it up. Maddox Sara, number eight from Thailand, taking it forward immediately. Now it's Roxena. Push it wide again, Thailand. Knock on in the tackle. Trying to play as positively as they can. Chayata. Nine. Brought down the advantage. Lost for in the tackle. Thailand is back in the middle of the pitch. Just one or two errors floating into the Kazakhstan game. believe it's only been two weeks since these teams have come together. Seems like only yesterday we were at the confines of the Hong Kong Football Club. Crouch. Join the day. Sit. And Ruxton thinks Kazakhstan's making some hard work of this and I have to agree with you Ian as Tyler now bring it to the short side. Number one. A high shot the there. Shorter. Referee Kwok blows and it's Quick tap and a run and a chip through the line, but there's no one generating any pressure on the kick. As Tachova takes the ball and glides away. The field opens up. 
for the Kazakhstan flyer and it's hard to think anyone's going to pull her back. I don't think she's managed to find top gear. It certainly doesn't have to and Kazakhstan will take one right under the dot. She uses the full availability of time. Try to Kazakhstan. 15-0 with the kick to come. And that should just about seal things. The girls from Kazakhstan. There's the kick. There's two. That's 17. And in the end, probably a much more respectable scoreline for the dominance that they have had. So you sit back and a ton of porn. Well, a fair effort to go low but in the end no. there's a ton more pace than that under the hood for this player takes in the deep breaths only a couple of minutes remaining or not even that really 15 seconds I should say Thailand received the ball and they construct a score of their own. There's the hooter. Draw them out wide. Kazakhstan defense. They, they are a physical team and they have taken the ball away from Thailand. They've lost it forward in the process though. <coughs> Referee Kwok plays full time. Kazakhstan triumph over Thailand. 17 points to nil. And we're underway in earnest here at Nam Dong ASEAN Stadium. In Cheon, Korea, as the Asia Rugby 7 series continues. Kazakhstan 17, Thailand 0, final score, game one of 16 today. Coming live and direct from Korea. Well, you see on the far side, they're starting to gather, and look at that. Very, very civilized indeed. Come in, a nice can of refreshments, maybe a box of food and receive a umbrella to just make, well, viewing conditions almost perfect. Here's your rugby continuing their terrific work growing the game. As Korea hosts this tournament, we look forward to getting back down to Sri Lanka in a couple of weeks. But all right, this is such an eye-catching stadium. And what a wonderful facility. It's, well, it'd be the envy of a lot of the Asian nations, Hong Kong included. As the TMO staff get themselves in the action a little bit there with a bit of a wave. But it is an absolute picture today. And as we look, it's enjoying the Oh, the beautiful conditions. Next up, China will be playing Singapore. And this should be interesting. China will be using a new group of women after making their selection for the upcoming World Series. China, Singapore. And from the Chinese team that played in Hong Kong. Uh, Yan Yan Gu has been elevated to the World Series squad. She'll be making a, its way, or winging its way internationally. And so the Asia Rugby 7 Series proving to be a great training ground. Here they come now in the striking red strip, of course, it's China. And the hard-working and ultimately durable Singapore side. China first. Yang Fei Fei and Hong Ting Ruan, probably two of the players to watch. Singapore, well, Eunice Chu, Jane Chan, and Alvinia Ao Yong. Three of the familiar names. Here's our referee, Ai Yoshida of Japan. Met Ai in the elevator at the hotel today. 
is quite nice. And referee making her way in the game. Singapore start out. China. Playing it back to play it forward as we often see in Sevens Rugby. There's a show, a go right from the base of the ruck and it's points on the board for China as number eight, Fei Fei Yang or Yang Fei Fei. Fires it in for China and we're not even 30 seconds into the game. That was just a simple pick up and go. Performed well in Hong Kong with three tries. Has a ton of pace. It's converted. Seven points to nil. Look at this. Singapore just caught napping. And we know this lady has does have tremendous pace, but her pace off the mark is probably where she wins most of the races. Ability to cover that opening 20 metres is startling. And a lot of the tries that she does score seem to come from standing starts. China. The restart. And they push it wide, trying to utilise the sun on the Singapore side. In Singapore, we see a lot of their sevens rugby operating between the touch and the 15 metre line. They like to keep their targets nice and close. Chinese look to swap the breakdown. Singapore happy to keep the ball in hand. Use the touchline. Almost leveraging their way up. It's two penalties on the trot now for China. They'll need to be careful. Referee Yoshida not happy with the way the Chinese are entering the breakdown. Well, a little bit of deception at the back led to a turnover at the front. And China now. Not seeing any space. They're almost able to break the line here at will, the Chinese runners. They keep the pressure up on the short side. Again, it's Yang Fei Fei. Takes it to ground. Pushed wide by Wang Yu Yu. Now they go even wider. Far side, in fact. They really are applying the blowtorch to the Singaporean defence. They've spread them wide. And they're taking their time to get across. China now using the ball well. Up to the 10 metre line. It's a breakaway again by Yang Fei Fei. Fei Fei again, Yang, Yang Fei Fei. Dots down twice. Three and a half minutes gone in the first half and it's the fifth try of the series for this strongly built speedster out of China. No, the score with this kick to come. As Su Chi slots the conversion. Singapore just not quite able to cover. Yang Fei Fei. And surely must be another player from this Chinese program managed by Chad Shepard, the New Zealander. That continues to turn over these little gems. China, the restart, 14 0. They lead two converted tries to none. Singapore keeping that ball nicely under control. Well, trying to keep it nicely under control. But Chinese defence through 
Chi and Yin Yang causing them some problems. Singapore still find no real space. Good, strong run though. Look at that. That's determined stuff. Penalty for China, and they won't waste their time hanging around here, the Chinese ladies. Good D, that's great D. Spot tackle coming in from Singapore, but they've got the ball, and you see the difference between the two sides in terms of handling. Chinese, no problem putting distance on their passes. They like to use the width of the pitch. Singapore forced to chase them. Good lines, great lines so far. Number nine in the action. Who you? And it is you. That takes the third try for China. Watching probably from the deck chair in Fiji, full of an Aka. Conversion attempt is, well, proven too difficult. 19 points, let's take a look at this. Just some good changes of direction in the end, defeating the Singaporean defence. They are... Uh, Class above uh, at the moment, China. They really are very, very strong indeed. And this Chinese women's sevens program continues to develop and impress. Penalty, claiming the ball from an offside position. And Singapore at the death of the first half get to play on. So, last shake of the tail for Singapore in this first half. break away and Singaporeans take the sanctuary of the sideline to head into the break 19 points to nil behind China who have come out and shown they've got the game underway they've brought the show to town and it seems to be working pretty good two opening tries to Wang excuse me Yang Fei Fei for the halftime score of 19 0. And a try to number nine, Ku Yu, as social media is being updated as we speak. You can keep up, keep up with us on Facebook at Asia.rugby. Not too sure if we'll be able to send you the food boxes, though. They look like they're going out the door pretty smartly and Asia Rugby on Instagram and Asia Rugby Live and the Asia Rugby Instagram account has been on fire in recent months did a tremendous job down the Asian games lots of great images plenty of fun Asia Rugby on Twitter We're accepting your tweets at Asia Rugby and hopefully you'll engage with us We'll be happy to engage with you, as well as that. Still, more people climbing into the Facebook Live feed as the teams get ready to return from the half. China just taking the last few minutes to get themselves all tuned up. Pretty fired up, don't they? This Chinese looking team. I shouldn't say Chinese looking team, they are the Chinese team. Yeah. 
Ready for a start in the second half. Game two of the Asia Rugby 7 Series Korean tournament being played. What could only be described as magnificent conditions here. Yeah. Namdong Asiad Stadium in Incheon and Singapore start the half with an error. But they'll come up with the restart, or will they? I think it might have been the first knock on, was the first infringement. As referee Yoshida towards China. Substitutions making their way in. Number eight, height number eight. Yeah. Three making their way into Oscar. the game Get for out. Singapore. Nine, Nine eight, okay, correct. Shuhara, okay. Mohammed, Abdul Gafur. Hi, Start sticks in China pretty swiftly moving the ball, the wraparound play. They've broken them in the centre. Where's the support for China? It is on hand. They sense the space might be back towards the touchline commentary. They could be right. Good secure play over the ball by China, but good def attacking in defence by the Singaporeans. So they've started the second half with a lot more vigour and effort than they did in the first half and China being forced to create space here which will be a real test of their ball handling as that Singaporean defence holds good shape and although she can't get away trapped inside the ruck not rolling away Ran Hong Ting for China goes to ground. Okay. Su Chi now out to number eight. Sorry, number nine. Hu Yu. And a try for China. So eventually they pry open the Singaporean defense. Hu Yu. Scores for China under the sticks. Conversion is successful. It's China leading Singapore 26 points to nil. Let's just take a look at this. Now, this came from a pretty decisive wraparound play, and they swung it back. They managed just to keep shifting that Singaporean defence around, and in the end, well finished up the middle of the field by Hu Yu. Here's the restart. China chasing down well. Well taken though by Singapore. An opportunity here that's good clean ball. They play short side. But Strong defence by Wang Ran. She looks to hold them up. Strong defensive play by the new player on the field, Wang Ran. Settles in the hooker in the front row. Tall. Looking player. Trying to feed the scrum. Running on at pace. Well, gee, they're looking good at the moment. On the outside, the in and away. And there's no obstacles between 
Wang Zhou and the try line is trying to take it to 31 with the kick to come. Beautiful win and away by Wang. That'll look stunning on the replay. Here they are. Tremendous now from the production team. Look at that. A bit of a stutter. Then really got on the job as she stepped to the outside. And it is a sensational replay. Great shots. Great try for China. They keep the scoring pressure up. And this will be a good wake-up call for all the teams in the women's draw. China have got on the ground an inch on and they are moving pretty smoothly. So back for the restart. It's a very, very big deficit now for Singapore. It's Chinese side systematically pull them apart and knock on though the ball fading all the time on Wang Ran so won't be too happy with that came out with a great start made a great tackle created a turnover and now has given one up of course it's not always the person has to catch the ball sometimes the pass has to be up Tight head, stolen by Singapore. Oh, this is sharp play. Let's see what these Singaporean women can do with the ball now. Look at China striking back almost immediately. They've turned it over, and it's number 10. Sorry, this is Wang Ran, number 10. And that just came, look, and they flooded the breakdown. There is the conversion. It's just driving in hard over the ball. They lost it on the tight head to Singapore, but they reacted well, the Chinese side. They flew into the first breakdown, secured the ball, and Wang Ran takes the... Try. He goes in the books as the try scorer and China lead out one more time. Singapore four around the ball and as you've only got three to attack. And number 11 is Wang Yu Yu. Ends up making the tackle. Tap and go. Wang Yu Yu and now the ball flows out even wider. In for two tries in less than a minute. Wang Ran. And an emphatic display in their opening game from China. As 14 minutes rings up. Singapore, unfortunately, have been totally outclassed this morning by this Chinese side. And their preparation, courtesy of New Zealander Tony Burgess, looks like it's been pretty good. Two weeks after the Hong Kong tournament, Hong Kong, China are looking pretty fresh. And the abilities of this Chinese program continue to show dividends China thumping Singapore in the second game today a couple of young fans there that's what we do at the rugby girls come in get a seat grab a drink it's like they're locked in for the day those kids they'll be having a lot of fun Game three underway, or will be underway very shortly. And this one, well, this will have people sitting up as well at home. Hong Kong taking on Sri Lanka. 
game number three for today. And Hong Kong third in their own tournament. They are a team that have to make up a little bit of room or a little bit of space on the rest of the field. The Hong Kong side have come here today or well, this weekend and they've put on quite a bit of preparation. They were into their activation session straight off the plane and we're ready for game three. The Asia Rugby 7 Series presents a Hong Kong versus Sri Lanka on the women's side of the draw. We are just about ready to get this one underway. Here they go, they pull the trigger and on comes Sri Lanka in the striking green strip as Hong Kong come charging out. Well, Natasha Olsen Thorne, number one, one of the premier players in women's rugby or women's sevens rugby. Number seven, Poo Hoi Yan, or Poon Hoi Yan, is a real exciting player to keep your eye on. And any one of these women from Sri Lanka have the ability to run round any team in the competition. They are a team of absolute flyers. The referee, Phoenix Yu, from China, prepares to start this third fixture, our third game today of 16. Hong Kong look at the ready. And it is Sri Lanka that kick off down to number seven, Poon. Now, this young lady's a bit of an excitement machine. Ashfold moves it on. Kwong moves it on in the team. Number 11, Chong Ka Yan. Also, fantastic runner of the ball. Hong Kong playing with some genuine confidence here at the moment. Look at them and they break through from Melody Yan. Or Melody Lee, I should say. Oh, breaking away. Well, they've shown some real skills. Is Olsen Thorne number one for Hong Kong. She takes it into the conflict area. Or the contact area. Loses it forward. That's some... Early enthusiasm from the Hong Kong side. Plenty of ball movement, unfortunately, as referee Zhu lose time off. There is a Sri Lankan player injured down in the background. It's very, very sore indeed. It's Placement player comes on and oh, that doesn't look too good at all. And she's looking very, very sore indeed. Brought out the plank. And the medical team swing into action. So that's always one of the reassure, reassuring things about these very well, well run and organised Asia rugby tournaments the medical teams that they do have on standby are absolutely crack units and there's no stone unturned when it comes to the welfare of the players it's absolutely paramount as we take a look and well, it looks like a body clash there players shoulder getting caught in the contact it's probably a dislocation by the look of things very 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 painful affair and such a shame to come all the way from Sri Lanka for about 30 seconds where the play it's a contact sport though and things like this do happen unfortunate very unfortunate Thankfully, though, this is not the 1970s where a sponge and a bit of water would have been tipped on. 
Sri Lanka now from the scrum. They get the ball rolling. He has a remarkable pace, but look at that big, strong defence by Natasha Olsen Thorne. And she's almost looking to run around Olsen Thorne and pick them off wherever she can get a hold of them. Drives in there, makes life unbearable for Sri Lanka again and generates a turnover. Tap and go. Olsen Thorne only knows one way, and usually it ends with the try line. Hong Kong open the scoring 4-0 tap and go quick response and that is one of the things that signifies the Hong Kong game yeah very very quick in terms of the decision making they like to play the game at a very very high tempo and Olsen Thorne not taking well, not taking any, even a moment to play on there. Conversion attempt is unsuccessful. The score is five points to nil. Hong Kong leads Sri Lanka. Two and a half minutes gone in the opening seven. This is game three. On the women's side of the draw. Our second tournament of three hosted here in Korea. A very pleasurable state so far if the weather keeps up like this there'll be no complaints at all restart goes deep and they've forced Sri Lanka down and into the corner and they'll have to run away from their own line it's not an ideal situation for Sri Lanka as they lose the ball only five meters out from their touch line so the set play from Hong Kong has yielded an opportunity very close to the line that's oh, good pressing defence. Oh, Hong Kong. Okay. Set. Good study. Oh. If only it was that easy. <laughs> the Sri Lankan halfback tries to sneak one in and take it out of the till. But Colleen Tursford scores for Hong Kong. Player from the Valley Club in Hong Kong, the red and black machine. And Colleen's attempted self conversion. Well,. I can tell you that there's a bit of ice making its way down to the cameraman at the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, there's Colleen tap and go and takes the try. Hong Kong leading 10-0. There's an opportunity running on strongly for Ching Ching Chan. And now they push wide. Bushful again. Poon waits for the ball at the back, but it's number 11, Kang Yan Chong. Oh, man, she's got some enthusiasm, this girl. Melody Lee takes it. Settles it up. Poon moves it on. Just outside the hands of the fast approaching Chong. Poon. Takes it off to the right again. Chong tries to get on the way. Just tremendous amount of power for such a little lady. Great work, Hong Kong. Maintain possession. Now they fly it. Finish fold. Chan gets spot tackled. Andy Lee keeps the ball alive. Finish fold again. Olsen Thorne digs in. Great ball out by Chan. Now they're starting to find their rhythm. Hong Kong, they try and get on the outside. Oh, just a wee look up. Uh, it wouldn't be the first rugby player guilty of doing that. It won't be the last. As we take a look, and just that little hint of, oh, where are you at? Oh, we've all done it. We've all done it. There's not a rugby player watching this broadcast. They can attest to have not of 
Just taking a wee peek as they're getting set upon by a defender. Fine. Steady. There's a scrum, the feed, securely taken by Sri Lanka, and they look to carry it away. And they've got to carry it the length of the park in the next 30 seconds to really stay within contention. 10 points. Floating run by Aisha. Penalty results though for Hong Kong and the dying moments of this first half. Sui Yan Poon. In fact, it will be So Yan Kwong. Poon now lays off to Hirschfeld, goes wide. Melody Lee finds Poon. They go to the outside for Thorne. Chong can't quite get it to hand. Doubles back, skips under the first one, lays the ball back on the inside to Poon, who seems to do more miles than a bus as Olsen Thorne picks up and bludgeons her way down to the 22. Poon, Lee now. Chan breaks through the middle. They're swarming on it, the Hong Kong support players. Melody Lee again, goes one way, looks the other, comes back. Chong, the Fendorf, lays it back. Lee beautifully off the ground. Advantage coming for Melody Lee, she won't need it. Tremendous try from Melody Lee, and justifiably so. Must have had hands on ball in that play at least four or five times. Superb work from Melody Lee, and that's a good try for Hong Kong. Well, between Poon and Melody Lee, I think they might have touched the ball at least 10 times. What a tremendous effort from Lee. The conversion attempt misses the posts. And it's Hong Kong taking an emphatic lead in this game over Sri Lanka. Okay. Of the two teams, it would appear that Hong Kong have got on the ground and settled fast. 15-0, they lead Sri Lanka at the halftime break. going to be very happy, I think, Hong Kong with their opening half. As the teams take a period to recover, and when I say a period, I mean a very, very short period indeed. Ian Ruxton makes the observation, look at this fan here, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this young one here. Absolutely on fire. Has just taken up the charge right down the front. Well, that's, that's, that is stirring stuff. Now she's going to take it back up to the people. Beautiful work from the cameraman. Outstanding enthusiasm. Gee, I wish I had that amount of fizz myself. There we go. That's how it's done. Little sister's still on the drinks, though. Been putting them away since day one. Oh, you can't say all the actions on the field today, ladies and gentlemen. Tasha Olsen Thorne, just uh, offering a few reminders. And it looks like some changes to be made. Number 12 for Hong Kong coming into the match. Pak Yan Poon. Otherwise known as Aggie Poon, aka the Guy Wu Express. Former national sprint representative for Hong Kong, crossed over to rugby some time ago. And has been one of the go to players for Hong Kong in their program over the years. Possess the pace that she once had. Has all the experience, and as you can see, still has a bit, still has a bit of toe herself. Just quietly as Aggie Poon slips it into third gear and finds it behind the sticks. 
And we're underway. Poon, Pak Yan. Stairs it up for Hong Kong. Yep, the pot's on the boil. It's tremendous stuff. Talk about hot pot. Poon converts her own try. 22 points to nil. Oh, look at this. In rugby union, there is a few truths, and one of the key truths is there's no substitute for pace. Aggie uh, Poon, I mean, she's 100% and running freely. It is one of the better sides in Asia women's rugby. She is a genuine flyer. Here is the restart from Hong Kong, and they're pressing Sri Lanka. They're making life very, very difficult for Sri Lanka. There's the pressure from the defence. Causes the errors. There's a touch and tap and go from Kwong. Poon goes to the left. They threaten the line. They threat more than threatened it. They've scored again, Hong Kong. And points beginning to flow as the top four sides put the line in the sand. Melody Lee. Second try. This one, well, a much easier effort than her first try. Conversion. Not threatening the post at all. 27 points to nil. They're able to load it up down the left-hand side. And Lee in the end. Falls over the line for the five-pointer. Earns a rest as a result. Colleen Dershwell restarts and it bounces awkwardly for Sri Lanka but they've got their hands on the ball and that's a start. Oh, Sri Lanka, they look for space. Poon shuts that gap down. There's some real emphasis. They look like they're going to flood the breakdown. They earn themselves another penalty. Wait, wait, please. Here. So a little bit of little discipline from Sri Lanka after what? the call. Fighting, fighting. Time off. Mahia. Changes being made into the lineup. Changes being made, a little bit, a little bit of late game administration with four Number minutes left. Off. Jessica Eden yep. looking for the options. Here we have the old firm of being given a break for the day. And to the match comes the four for Sri Lanka, Nadika. Taps and goes. A bit of a delayed effort from Kwong. She drew the defence, but the set piece starts to come apart. Gee, that was a good hit from Sri Lanka. Outstanding tackle. Hong Kong feed it up and wide, and it did float forward. Good communication between the referee and the assistant referees. That one upon review went quite a way forward, didn't it? Okay. Set. Wait, steady. Nadika clears a little bit of room off the ball. Short arm restart for Sri Lanka. So they can get away to a bit of a fly here. They'll be looking for some space. They do have this terrorising pace when they get going. Good pick up and go from Dun Ninja. Short side, they bring it. Taken down. Looks like Eden with the ball. She looks back on the inside for support. May not need it. Could go all the way. Won't go all the way. Has to lay it back. First on the scene is Chong. Now, Yuen 
Straight of the sticks, Hong Kong Eamon. Good counter ruck, but through the middle comes number two, So Yun Kwong, and it's a try to Hong Kong, and the pots out there for everybody to fire into. Kwong, So Yun, try Hong Kong, and it's it forward. Conversion as we take a little look at the slow motion replay. Get ready for a restart. Poon pushes it even wider. Yuen takes it into contact and she is again. Yuen spreads it. Ho they push wider. Good ball handling from Hong Kong. They're keeping the ball alive. Terrific work by Jessica Ho. What a run. They're in there contesting the ball. Sri Lanka not making it easy by any means. There's a lock, a stutter step. It's Ho that takes it up and in. And it's a try for Hong Kong. Number eight, Jessica Ho. First try of the series for the youngster. Lines up a conversion attempt 39 points to nil. There is the hooter. The conversion is good 41 nil. We'll be making that official. This. Jessica Ho steps out of the tackle. Certainly comes into the Hong Kong squad with a good reputation. Jessica Ho. See this young lady assert her class on the tournament. Final score, Hong Kong defeat Sri Lanka 41 points to nil as the Open Rugby 7 series continues on and we finish on the ladies' side of the draw. Time now to start the big bangers. Japan versus Korea and what do you know? Went straight into the heavy action, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no, there's going to be... Oh, this will be one that will bring them in from right around. As Japan take on the home side, Korea. It's these... Early days for the Korean women program. Facing off against the battle hardened, skillful Japanese women side. And they just happen to have probably the finest women's player in Asia and one that would rate pretty highly in world standards as well. Nakamura, effervescent captain. She plays a lot of minutes every tournament. Does the Japanese skipper. And straight away, Japan onto attack. They move it wide. Very, very well. Confident with the ball in hand on the outside. Japan go. And in they go for the opening try. It is Tatsumi with the opening try, the smiling assassin, 
So he sits out wide on most occasions and has a blistering turn of pace. And on this occasion, gets rid of probably one of Korea's standout performers in Lee. Conversion attempt unsuccessful. back for a restart. Korea. Ball in hand. Good to see. Satsumi. Well, what a driving tackle it is. Nakamura on hand to create even more headaches for the home side. It's trapped behind the gain line once again by Japan. Hard pressing blitz defense by the Japanese ladies. Can't be breached though. Korea organized themselves as much as possible. Not rolling the way. Referee Chan. Signaling. And Korea will take it to the sideline. For the line out restart well the korean women came very very close to securing a victory in hong kong it would have been the first in their program's short history this would be the case and unfortunately they've turned it over here straight off the bat as nakamura sh shovels it on very quickly knocked down by number six Yellow card offence for Lee. Career reduced to six players, and the player leaving the field is arguably the finest one they have. Japan now secure the ball, and now they move it. Japan into space, and away runs number four, Riho Kurogi. Karogi scores her try. The conversion attempt is successful, taken very quickly indeed. And there is the problems that are caused when you get reduced to six. It's a minimal defensive line at the best. Two players missing the assignment on defence. And Karogi dots down for Japan. Japanese girls are not the biggest team in international sevens, nor in really Asian sevens, but their fitness, their skills, and their decision-making ability sits on a completely different level at times. They uh, are behold to watch Japan. They've proven it time and time again. It's can't be too many, uh, too much argument amongst the audience about their ability. Greetings to Tim Stiles, tuning in from Hong Kong as Japan from the base of the run, the scrum, take it wide again. Tsutsumi, look at this, almost effortless. The change up there, very hard to detect the extra pace under the hood. And Honoka Tsutsumi. Takes his second try today, and this player will not be too far away from leading the try scorers as Lee will be looking to come back on for her team as quickly as she can. Tsutsumi, just that little change up. You can see the hips drop down a little bit further as she calls on the extra pace and power. And it's remarkable. Wing up from Japan. 
continues on her way as Japan restart now. In this final game of the women's bracket today. We'll be back, but we have four games now in the 16. Lee from Korea back on the field. Stands out for brilliant shock of blonde hair. Japan, the, now they draw Korea under the wide channels. Keep the emphasis going. Well, that's a tremendous play. That is a remarkable. Just when I said they're not the biggest team in women's rugby, Yuki Ito proves that they're not short of power at all. She picks and goes straight out of the contact and pretty much runs through an effective Korean defence. The Japanese conversion flies like a Bowden Barrett special. But look at this. Off the ground, there's gaps through the middle. Good power, good drive, great determination. Look at that. There's determination on that face, isn't there? There's Ito. Scores her try, and the half time score comes up at 24 points to nil. And if you want to talk about warning shots, that might be the biggest one of the day. Seven minutes gone, 24 points in. And the Japanese women's side have barely broken a beat of sweat, I gather. Sit back and take in this gorgeous weather. You can follow Asia Rugby on social media at Facebook forward slash Asia.rugby. Or on Instagram at Asia Rugby Live. The Instagram account is been a lot of fun so tune in Asia Rugby on Twitter at Asia Rugby look forward to seeing your messages as we try Miracle on a superb day here in Incheon, Korea a superb facility for rugby it's always a bit of a treat coming here for the Asia Five Nations, oh, sorry, the Asia Rugby Championship, I should say. Caught in a time warp there, sorry. This Korea get ready to start the half. Number nine is back. And straight on the action. Great step from Ito. They push it wide, Japan threatening straight off the bat. Well, shut the gate, it's over. Tsutsumi jogs one in from 50 out. She was given the outside line and really had no need to put the foot on the gas at all. Flowed through beautifully and Japan start the first half with an absolute flyer the conversion attempt is successful and that might have actually been the longest part of the point scoring process here we go great initial run from Ido set Susumi into action out wide and never really had to worry about it but okay Susumi. They, Japanese do like to work the scramble restart play. We saw it plenty of times in Hong Kong. And they managed to keep the ball alive, although did it touch someone on the way through? I think that might be the call from referee Chan. And it's a strategy of Japan's that works very well because they've got the ability to put that ball on the dot from the restart very very consistent set piece play as Korea makes some changes Jota to Kuni 
Anthony Toto up. Watching from Singapore. Our great friend, Mr. Craig Wooden. Watching from parts unknown in Brisbane. Lee takes it into contact. Themselves a penalty, so Rhea. With enthusiasm taken straight at the Japanese line and they managed to create some pressure out wide. Now, where's the handling at? Good pass from Lee. Just a little bit laboured there in the mid part of the pitch. It's Lee again trying to start the play up for her teammates. Japanese defence is almost picks off the ball in flight. It's lost forward by number nine. Kozaza. Well. The Korean team playing right at the edge of their ability. Message from Tim Stiles. The men's competition starts in the very next game, game number five, where at game number four is Lee. Puts it on the toe to push it through the line, but picking it up and running. Tanaka. Here's the cutback. Tanaka again feeds it. They move it to Sumi. It's Kasasa. Keep it coming. Japan into space. Ito. Ito for the line. Almost unchallenged. And it's Japan. Score another. As we see a bit of water flying on for the try scorer, let's pick up this replay in the end. Just great hands from the Japanese ladies. They maintain their width, they keep the, the attacking players well spaced. Confident in their handling ability. Conversion attempt was an attempt. And greetings to James C. Deke watching from Okinawa during a typhoon. I hope you're staying safe there, James. There's been a few typhoons around the area lately. There's Japan restart. 36 0, they lead. Good, strong carry from Lim. And infringement from Japan. Lee, ball in hand now. Looks on the outside. Finds Kim. Yuri Kim. Drives it forward and through and steps out of the Japanese tackles. That's an outstanding play. Lee, picks and go. Backdoors one to a support player. Guan. the ball now it's in the hands of Park Park into contact challenged by Japan and turned over by Japan and quickly played by Japan I bet tap and go is the play into space glides the Japanese runner they set up almost in front of the sticks Hirano pushes it wide Bati Vakalolo scores in the corner for Japan. And the points keep tumbling for the Japanese ladies. Five more, in fact, with the kick to come. As we look, and well, the tackle rather ineffectual. Betty Vakalolo over without too much problem at all. As we get ready for the restart, here's a look at the conversion attempt. And we're underway. So Lee takes the ball after it bobbles around. 
Trim trims the backs. Backs. Amazing back and a big hit. Counter ruck from Japan. Successful. Now they move it. Tatiyama. Ball back on the inside. It's a good jinking run by number 12. Nagata. And it is a slim figure of Hana Nagata. Over for her first try. And Japan keep the points coming as the full time Huda blows. And the conversion attempt here. Successful 40 minutes. Japan have racked up a hell of a score as we just watched Nagata here. Well, took two Korean plays with it. She's not the biggest girl in the world by any stretch. She's going well, and it's an emphatic win to Japan. 48 points to nil over Korea is the final score. And so ends the opening bracket of women's games here at the Asia Rugby Sevens series for 2018 we move now to the men's draw which will start in a few minutes time as we take it again this stand here today Namdong Asiad Stadium in Incheon and a reminder that the Facebook live stream will end after this match. The stream will start soon after. Soon after, please refresh. Don't go anywhere. Let's have a look at the pool standings for well, thus far, I should say, for the day. Japan one from one, along with Hong Kong. Two big scores. You look at that: 48 and 41, respectively. They carry the three points through. Japan and Hong Kong looking. Like the Pool C standouts, Pool D, China and Kazakhstan, both with wins. China, a big win for China over Singapore, 43 points. They have, they lead with three along with Kazakhstan, Thailand and Singapore picking up the point each. So those are the standings from Pool C and D, the women's side of the draw. And we come back up next. Men, time to call on the players from Philippines and China. Here's some information for you if you're following us on social media. Please do if you're not already. Join us at Asia Rugby on Asia.Rugby on Facebook. Some images of yourself here today, or wherever you are in the rugby world. On Asia Rugby on Instagram, that's at Asia Rugby Live. You can see all the images, as curious as they may be. And Asia Rugby on Twitter, at Asia Rugby. It's a nice cooling breeze making its way from right to left on your screen. And that is about all the cloud cover we can muster up here in Hong Kong in Xi'an today, unfortunately. Marvellous day if you're looking to work on the tan. Not such a marvellous day if you've got 14 minutes of hardcore running. These pitches live and direct from the Asia Rugby 7 Series, Namdong, ASEAN Stadium, in Cheon, Korea. And you may need to adjust your television sets, ladies and gentlemen. These pitches are for real. Here we go. The men's side of the draw gets ready to kick off. It's the Philippines taking on China, the Volcanoes versus China. Game one on the men's side of the draw for this second tournament of three. The 
the Asia Rugby Sevens Series. That's all go. The Frano Botica coached Philippine Volcanoes showed some real signs of life in Hong Kong. And they pushed and they prodded and they took out some big players in Hong Kong. And here's one of them that felt the sting early on. It was China. And they will be looking to certainly right the ship. Is referee Matt Rodden from Hong Kong gets us ready for this fixture. One of the officials from the World Series, certainly one of the senior whistlers here this weekend, and referee Rodden gets it underway, and we are underway. First game of the men's side of the draw early era though from Gu Yao Yao. Find on your hooker. Stability. Wait for the ball. Crouch. Find. Sit. Scrum time. Right. Philippines. Straight away, carrying the ball strongly. Advantage. Advantage over. China breaking through the line. We'll be looking for running options. Well, oh, delay there has caused them to probably blow the opportunity. From a standing start. Red ball, red ball. Play on. Wide the ball goes now for China. Testing the defence. Advantage being played. High tackle. You heard the call from referee Rodden. High tackle, direct contact. And it'll be a yellow card as well. So, no nonsense from Mr. Rodden is the message quite clearly to wait, wait. the Volcanoes. Come on. It's China now. Seven on six. Very casual pick up. <laughs> the Chinese player there and on the outside they go they've overloaded them and trying to run the first one in and almost take out the goalposts in the process well Liu Jun Kui Skills the opening five there's the extra two and trying our way to a seven point lead. Look at this. Nice bit of draw and pass. And strongly finished. And you do have to watch out for those goalposts. They are there pretty much every time. back in off the shins of the Volcanoes player now this, this field has opened up Dawson looks back on the inside he's there again as they try and wrap around they've lost the ball though and it spills into touch Your player pushed his player. Oh, okay. Good oh, okay. well, the evidence, the judgment from referee Rod. Dawson's used a uh, 
very advanced technique of tackling and dispossessing at the same time. Don't worry. Crouch. Let me go, okay? Find. Sit. Stop pushing me. Here's the heave, the volcanoes put the heat on the Chinese straight away and it causes an error. The ball comes loose. They flood down on it. Good work from the volcanoes, opting instead of flying into that breakdown just to hold off. Ball! Ball is called, they must release and they do. So far, the volcanoes, even though they're trailing by seven, they've got the pressure on. China, they're going to force them to go from coast to coast. Can't get around. Hardwick. Tackles being made, but the Chinese have been able to draw the field. They've actually turned that over. Superb play. So now, the Philippines through Stevenson. Seven is Lynch. They go to the far side. Young, ball away. Dawson runs over the 22. He's unmarked. He's unchecked. And the Volcanoes take five out of the Chinese seven. And now trail by two with the kick to come. Wow. Interesting scenes. Joe Dawson. Let's have a look at this. He manages to slip through. Four. And the Chinese defence can't get back in time to rustle him up. Conversion attempt. It's over. It's drawn up. Well, well, well. Yeah, you thought... China might be coming back to exact a bit of revenge on the Philippines after Hong Kong. Well, it's not the case. Philippines, even after having one man in the bin, managed to gain parity on the scoreboard. China, tap and go. China now organize themselves they take the space they go to the line now they're attacking strong defense from Wahini of the Philippines China trying to create space for their runners out wide defense from the Philippines slides to meet it can hang on here. It's good marking Release. by. They've got to let him go again. That rule is pretty simple. Once the referee calls release, it's deemed the player is off his feet. He's been tackled. He must be released. And China lose the opportunity to go into the half a lead ahead. The Volcanoes have battled back. They look in pretty good shape too. This Philippine side, seven all against China. Right, we've got ourselves a real game. Game one of the men's brackets. And there it is, tied up at half time. Terrific stuff. Greetings again to all the fans for following the Asia Rugby 7 Series on Facebook Live through the Asia Rugby page. Thank you for joining us. Let us know where you're watching from, who you're supporting. It's always a treat to have fans from all over the world. The wonderful thing about the Facebook Live platform is that brings people you might be Philippines fans living in other parts of the world and to watch it. Jason says, bring home the adobo, boys. Well, I don't think there'd be too much adobo getting home with these guys. Not once you've seen them in the food hall. They're just going to have to bring some adobo with them. Here we are. Lovely day at the rugby. 
looking absolutely thrilled to bits these two these three fans the wonderful thing about sevens is that if you ever get bored you can turn around and watch the rugby Rodden. referee checking both sides china with the ball seven minutes to play it's all tied up good tight opening fixture here first of all in the opening game of the men's bracket in the asia rugby seven series career leg dorse with the ball big ball back in lynch lays it off young ball back on the inside they look on the outside were there runners they probably were the philippines now going with some slider hand sean lynch takes it to ground Good steal though, great turnover by China. Pressure turnover. They've come up with the ball, China, and they're threatening straight away. Advantage Roberts being turned inside out, advantage being played for China. They need a score, they need to throw their marker down in the second half, and they do. And they open the second half of the match with a try. 12 points to seven, they lead. And Chen, Yong Chang, trots it in. Oh, it's a good turnover, wasn't it? And that's the importance of turning ball over in this form of the game. As long as you've got people who are willing to react fast enough. That could be a concern, though. Conversion not successful. China leading seven points to 12. The Philippines, well, they do have a goal kicker. Chen offered the seat after scoring the try. It's, it used to be the simple reward system of sevens. You've played long and hard and you're breathing hard, so you're going to be rest after you've scored. Picked off by Hernandez now. It's volcanoes. They go wide. They try them on out wide. China's up to the task. Yeah, they didn't go forward. They do not know. Superb hands in the end. Straight through the gap. Fly the Philippines. Boeni, the ball drifted forward from the pass. It's unfortunate. Could have really put the kibosh on China's tournament had they managed to get that away. Chris Bird not able to find his man with a legal pass. Uh, greeting to Janelle Madrona, Clark Jett. So the national program as well, watching from the Philippines. Janelle, I hope you're well. Outstanding rugby player from the Clark Jets, one of the best teams in the Philippines. Now China, hot on attack, and they move it to the right. Good defence, Bird coming across, making a clattering tackle. They need some big D here, the Philippines. They need the ball as well. China looking to flow with it, and they're looking strong, ball in hand. Still good defence. Look at them chasing them down at every turn. The Philippines will be absolutely desperate. Within five points of the Chinese, they break out, they go wide. And China, well, what's he done there? He's not released. Is that the call? He, no, he hasn't been released by the tacklers. Line, line. And so China with an opportunity to put this game away here right now. Let's go, China. And they do. So you, and they've lost the board, and that's a bad mistake. Knock on offside. By China. Back here. Philippine side is not the kind of team you want to get tails up in the end because we know the fighting spirit of the volcanoes. 
They don't win them easy, but they do win them. Quite often have to win them right in the death. Bird clattered by an illegal tackle. Not in front of the, well, not from the mark. You've got to release the ball when you tap it as well. So you can see the enthusiasms, well, the enthusiasm of the volcano side. And they're looking to blow up if they can. No gaps in the centre of the park. Counter ruck is solid by China. That's tremendous play. Play on, turnover's good. Release and move. it is a turnover. You heard the call from referee Rodden. China, my word, they've done well to snuff out play that. On. Now they're playing it flat. Philippines need to commit some defenders. China. Feng fires it wide to Lee. Lee takes on two. Feng delivers. Liu. Try scorer from the first half. He scored the opening try. That's Feng back to the right. Finds Liu. Luda. Powerful player. He really impressed in Hong Kong two weeks ago. As referee Rodden plays time. Three. Less five. than 60 seconds remaining. The Philippines need to get their hands on the ball if they want to square this one up. Two. Two. It's up. Change is being made. Pretty exciting game for the first game of the men's draw. Seven all at half time. 12 7. Time on. The Crouch. Philippines are making life very, very, very Five. difficult for China. Set. And don't forget, they're the last cast of specialists in the Philippines. There's the opportunity they've probably been looking for. So from the mark, it's the Philippines now. They try China on right in the middle. Another penalty. Philippines into contact. Ball. Look at that big play from Chen. He's making look almost impossible to get down. They do get him down. But not in time. And they've lost the advantage of the Philippines from those two penalties. It's good play by China. They were aware of what was happening. They were mindful of the fact that the clock is running down and the Philippines will be desperate to run it in. Stay in the contest. And they've made a terrific play by holding that ball up and then receiving. Wait, 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 wait for the call. Stability. Crouch. The final horn is gone. They lead five. by five at the moment. They have the game Six. in control. I don't expect... China will want to be staying out here all day. In fact, to the sideline they go. And that is game over. China defeat the Philippines. A very, very dangerous foe for the Chinese side. And they beat them. You wouldn't say convincingly, but when they had to, they pulled out in the big play. Final score, the Philippines 7, China 12. Game one of the men's draw concludes here at Namdong Asiad Stadium. And she bathed in sunshine today. As we settle up and get ready for game number two. Greetings to Kane Jury watching from. Assume Dunedin. And they were celebrating 20 years of NPC dominance, 1998, September 22nd. The Otago side beat Waikato at the House of Pain, Carisbrook. Last week they had a reunion. <laughs> Would have been fun for everyone, mainly the publicans of Dunedin, I suspect. Next up, Japan taking on Malaysia. The 
Asia Rugby Seven Series. Korea this week. Two weeks time down to visit our friends in Colombo, Sri Lanka. Probably one of the more exotic stops on the Asia Rugby Seven Series. It's always a treat to go to new places. Rugby culture in Sri Lanka, very, very strong as we all know, high school level. The crowds are almost fanatical. Just waiting a few minutes for the teams to pull up to the bumper. Sun keeps streaming in to Namdong ASEAN Stadium. Lovely cooling breeze making its way across the pitch. Didn't exactly say it's worth any points today. As we know, at sevens, it's the key is to get your hands on the ball and keep it there. Dan says, hard luck, boys. Heads up. Try again. Go the Volcanoes. Well, they're a great bunch of guys. It's always good to bump in and have a chat to them at the team hotel, the Philippines. Asia Rugby Sevens. The series continues. Here now, Japan. Take on Malaysia in game two of the men's draw at Namdong Asiad Stadium. And Incheon, Korea, welcome to these magnificent pitches. Well, Japanese side winners in Hong Kong. Jose Seru and Kameli Soyejima. Uh, the standouts of that Japanese side. Ismail, number two for Malaysia. Is an out and out flyer. A referee from Singapore, Mr. Charles Brown. <laughs> and there is the probably one of the best known faces in the Ready? series at the moment. Sakai Ready? of Ready? Japan. He is a master of his trade. There's Malaysia kicked deep. Siru and he has no problem in freeing the arm and getting them away. Fukumoto lays it back. Siru, Suijima. Now they push it wide. Sakai. And Malaysia, it's pretty much onto the back foot almost from the word go. Forcing them back now. They're playing with wonderful control, Japan. And they're causing problems out wide for Malaysia. That's all right defence. The greatest defender of them all is the sideline. And Malaysia use it to good effect there on number three. Space. Shohei Sukumoto. Just stay there, please, White. In we come. In. Jalil. The ball. And he overthrows the mark. Flying at it was Sakai. Option. Option. The first infringement Option, and the advantage. Scrum. Comes back to Japan and we need to take the scrum. A very good scrum attacking here. position. Some of the features of this Japanese side is that they are very efficient in the way that they get things done. If there's contact to be had, they'll get to it as quickly as they can. I know they can create space. They do some terrific pace. Sakai. He goes wider. Kazawa feeds the ball on and 
almost as simple as an nursery rhyme for number four, Kazawa. Third try of the series. And Japan open the score. The minutes gone now on the clock. Conversion is successful. Just look, and there he was on the support line. Kazawa. Japan leading 7 0. High restart, it's partially claimed by Japan, but it falls well for Malaysia as Nazaruddin takes off towards the corner. Oh, he's just about done all the work he had to. What about that one? And referee Charlie Brown will call the time. Well, if that is bounced correctly for the Malaysians, that is a tremendous turn of. Fortune and he's given it as well, referee Brown. Now let's take a look. Nazaruddin has done a tremendous amount of work there. He's laid off the ball on the inside and somehow Mohammed Zahib has managed to get a hold of the ball and dot it down. There was some suggestion that there was knock on. It was flatly denied by the TMO and Malaysia in the blink of an eye have hit back at Japan 7-5 from the restart and Japan let it flow down if have a curious yeah, Set up for the restarts. Blue, first, Japan. Blue. Player in the centre. Jumping Hello. quite either Malaysia. side of them. Move. And then out wide, the single player Come as in, well. Please. So they're Come almost in. covering. It's almost like a mirror formation. They're covering off the options. And now Japan. Nakazawa. Nakazawa challenges on the outside. Nazaruddin, he doesn't make it though, but Japan, they've stretched them one way. The attack begins to come back to the other where there could be some space. And Jose Saru, Saru now in, out and away, and the foot has gone down. And he glides off towards the try line and proves the angle for the kicker. And Japan have made it pretty clear there. Now they've got strike power one side or the other. Jose Saru <laughs> or even Jose Saru I should say. Look at this. In on one, out on the other and really there's not much that can be done about it. Jalil tried as he could. Here's the conversion attempt by Sakai. That's on target. Japan doing it right. 14-5. My word, it helps when you've got athletes like this just lingering out on the wing. What a tremendous run by Siru. He just about climbs high to reclaim the restart with it. It'll be a line-out restart. Malaysian ball. Okay. Here. Stay there. Yep. Okay. So our Malaysian fans make their way into the Facebook live feed. Wonderful to have you with us. Had a great experience in Kuala Lumpur earlier in the year with the Asian Rugby Championship. We look forward to getting back there at some point in the very near future. Fantastic crowd in Kuala Lumpur as Japan now move it swiftly. Sakai, Nakazawa, he goes wide again to Suijima, try for Japan. And in the casual stakes, that was almost a 10 out of 10. 
And already Sakai's breaking down the play for his teammates. As we just look at simple draw and pass. The Malaysia were never able to reset in time once that quick line out throw was taken. Good experience for the Malaysians to come up against an outfit like Japan. The conversion attempt is away to the inside of the uprights. But Malaysia are getting to see the very best in the region up in it in action up close. And you can't not be impressed if you're against an outfit like this. You've got to take every opportunity to play these teams and learn what you can. Look at how they operate. Look at how they execute. And Malaysia trailing 19 points to five. So short break, opportunity for you to now put in the order with mum in the kitchen and on social media, on Facebook. You can follow us at Asia.Rugby is former All Black and Wigan, Wigan great. Frano Bodica looks on. Asia Rugby on Instagram. You can find us at Asia Rugby Live. And taking all of these magnificent beauty shots from around the stadium. Asia Rugby on Twitter. At Asia Rugby. Let us know your thoughts, your comments, your predictions on who's looking good, who might be the top try scorer by the end of the weekend. And who could be leading the Asia Rugby 7 Series is the Sun Umbrellas. It looks like it might be a bit of an import, that one. Didn't realise you could bring your own umbrellas to the stadium. Japan prepare to go back to business. Jalil and his countrymen return to the field of play. That is what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. You'll hear it called all sorts of things. The ball, the pill, the nut. Once you've got it, you can score. And the only way you can win is by scoring. Japan now. Start the second half. Very shallow restart. Contested well by Malaysia, and they take it, and they go down the far side. So, early success for the Malaysians. Malaysia, midway, 10, halfway on their side of the line. Little small lapse in concentration. Number nine, Zaheeb, but they're breaking back down the commentary touchline well. Malaysia, all the ball, all the possession, and now the territory. And they're playing with some good confidence, this Malaysia side. Japan not taking a back seat but Malaysia have got themselves off to a good strong start the intelligence, intelligence of Japan as they just sit and pressure they'll wait for the error if they can get it there's a chance to get over the ball they did well but referee Brown blows up the penalty and he blows time off as unfortunately one of the Malaysian Come players on. is down in the background. Seems like some sort of knee injury. Top. Yes. Top, please. Number th okay. And it looks like the player is retiring. See him down in the background there is okay. Ross Lee. Number four for Malaysia. Taking a very physical route. And in fact, it's Jalil that's come off number three. So, 11 is Joseph Gordon. He takes it strongly to the Japanese. Still Japan happy. Suijima counter rucks. Sakai comes in to try and steal the ball as well, but Malaysia do well to hang on. Now they run 
foot out towards the grandstand or the far stand. The umbrella stand, I guess we could call it. Ishmael, ball is loose. Japanese claim it at knock the on. knock on. Turns the ball over to Japan formally. His Four. referee Four. Brown signals a few more changes to be made. Come white. Nakazawa makes his way off the pitch. Nine and a half minutes gone in this 14 minute encounter between Japan and Malaysia. Japan leading 19 5. Probably an easy sort of start, really, by Japan. Crouch! They haven't come out. Crouch, please. All guns blazing, and they've managed to secure 19 points without too much fuss. Now, Japan take it down the umbrella stand side. Shift it back. 11, Asano, Hashino, I should say. Sakai lays it off for Hashino again. And Ashino on the support line benefits greatly. He shows shows it. So a little bit of try line trickery from Kasuki Hashino. His first try of the series supplied to him Kevin. by Katsuyuki. Sakai, number seven. He threads the uprights for two more points. Japan moved to 26, Malaysia five as we catch the closing moments of the try. Machine eight. Well, put the suggestion that he might pass the ball. Sakai looks like he's heading to the bench, and in fact he is. Japan start short went backwards off blue and Pick, just hold there yeah good no no don't the come in deflection off the Malaysian player has created come please wait a line wait. out feed for Move, please. Japan and take it pretty smoothly Yoshino Fires one off into the vacant real estate. And they go wide. Jose Saru. Bump and toss. Japan, they are going backwards, but they've still got the ball. And having the ball means you want to go forward. And suddenly, Japan, after drawing the Malaysian defence across, get it to Shohei Fukumoto. And Fukumoto... Scores his second try for the day. And that was just some good patience by this Japanese team. He drew them back. The space appeared down the commentary touchline. And two crisp passes set. Shohei Fukumoto away. Conversion attempt. Doesn't threaten the sticks. Japan maintain their advantage. 31, point to f 31 points to five. Just over a minute left to play in this encounter. Ball hoist, ho hoisted high, wide, and handsome. It's batted back for Japan. It's Ayashi. Takes it into contact. Supporting him was the Kano, and now they break out through Ashino again. Kawasaki takes it into contact. That's the 22. Ashino moves it now. They flow the ball wide. That's Motomura and number 12. Penalty. 
quick tap from number eight, Nakano, Hoshino, and they find Soejima out very wide for the try. And Japan likely trying to just conserve energy as they dispatch this plucky Malaysian side. And it's hard to... It's almost an oxymoron playing sevens and conserving energy, but it all comes back to the effort that goes in. Conversion of 10 from out wide is hoisted. Flies in front of the uprights. 31, or well 36 points to five. And we'll just wait for the official final score to come back. But Japan proving far too strong for Malaysia there it is Japan 36 Malaysia 5 final score here second game of the men's draw in the Asia Rugby 7 series from Namdong Asiad Stadium in Incheon Korea So the good weather continues. Stunning, stunning day in the autumn months of Korea. Some of the trees in the background just beginning to turn. They're off camera at the moment, but it is a gorgeous, gorgeous day. Up next, run, go run, tell them. Sri Lanka and Chinese Taipei Get ready to take up the action. Game three of four for the men's side of the draw before we switch back. Take a second bracket of the women's games as we go through 16 games today. Again, thank you for your company and a big hello to members of the audience. Wherever you're watching in the world today, wonderful that you've tuned in. Please help spread the word and make sure compatriots that International Sevens in Asia is alive, or well, is alive, well and happening. David, just awaiting the two teams to make their arrival at the tunnel. It's been so far running pretty smoothly. It may even be a little bit too much sun for some of the people here today. As we get ready now for game number seven on our program. Game number three of the men's draw. So here we go, the Asia Rugby 7 Series. It's Sri Lanka, the Tuskers, taking on Chinese Taipei. And the Namdong Asiad Stadium in Cheon, Korea. It's go time for Chinese Taipei. It's show time for the Flyers from Sri Lanka. We welcome in the fans from both nations. Well, when they get running the Sri Lankan team, it is a sight to behold. Dayan Pereira, two of the key names in the side, is still picking youth which is good to see. Chinese Taipei may on paper look mismatched, but we've seen some real fight out of this Chinese Taipei side over recent tournaments. And we don't expect that to be any different. Nori Hashimoto of Japan, the referee for this fixture. Looking bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Down to the breakfast hall very early, I might add, as all the referees are. 
Very well organised group of individuals. Right here, Suranga. Yeah, sweep. North side, turn to Taipei. Time on in this encounter between Chinese Taipei and Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka straight to the outside. Here's this extraordinary pace that we've spoken about. They lay it back on the inside. It goes forward on the bounce. And so they'll be brought back. for the scrum restart. An opportunity now for Chinese Taipei to get their hands on the ball. Johnny's Taipei now from the scrum. Push it straight into the midfield. Good, strong run. From the men in blue and white. And that good. Nice defence from Sri Lanka. Johnny's Taipei to the outside. Well, they've got pace of their own, Chinese Taipei. The ball back on the inside. Opening try for Chinese Taipei. And it's two Ming Quan. Scorer of the opening try for Chinese Taipei. Well, what about that one? From the scrum, they got it up to the midfield and it looked like Sri Lanka had them covered as we take in the conversion attempt. And it's successful, so it's 7-0. Chinese Taipei look and a terrific run by Liu Yao Chang as he sent away his teammate two. If I sound a little bit surprised about it, I think I am. Great opening score for Chinese Taipei. So. Chinese Taipei. Looking to draw in the Sri Lankan defence. Maybe find it. Well, you're not going to find a seam if you can't carry the ball at it. And a breakdown in concentration. He ends a period with a fence for Chinese Taipei. They'll be probably a little bit upset about that. They had a good opportunity of creating Crouch. some extra pressure. Bye. Set. Sri Lanka. Now they go wide, and it's Naveen. Drawing them back, trying to use the ball and generate some width. Now they look like they've got through, and they are through, and away they go. Danuk. Dots down for Sri Lanka. 7-5, kick to come. We should be all even by here. And really, it's superb work by the Sri Lankans. It's a very, very, very well-executed and clever sevens. Able to draw in. The Chinese Taipei defence and then run around it. It's good ball handling, seven alls to score. Two and a half minutes remaining. Sri Lanka on the board. And the restart. Cuts the touchline. Chinese Taipei to throw in. 
to go to here. Yep. It's fine. Yep. So there. Yep. Number three. Dunshe, Chandras. For Sri Lanka. Oh, for it. Playmaker. There's the. Right now, the war from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ball right, going into the line out was not straight. It's your first time watching rugby union of any description. The line out said peace. It's important. Well, you must throw the ball in Coach. straight. Bye. And if it's deemed not straight, then possession is given away to the opposition. Tap and go by Surinaf. Sri Lanka, the edge it even closer now to the Chinese Taipei line. Finally, they send one of their big hitters straight up. Big counter ruck by Chinese Taipei. They've committed a lot of bodies to that, though. They look like they may even be able to break out here, Chinese Taipei. Good support lines back on the inside. They like to play the ball close to the centre, Chinese Taipei. Some would call that a bounce pass, but that's would be overly optimistic, I think, as Chinese Taipei managed to keep their hands on the ball. Uh, certainly generated some space out there. There's so much space, there's no one there. Chinese Taipei. 20 seconds left. Hats off, ladies and gentlemen, and the Facebook audience to Chad Shepard joining us. Very happy to see girls from his stable and the women's program of China advancing strongly early. Sri Lanka for the line and a try for Sri Lanka. Komitiki. Pereira just jogging in for a try. As half time is called, there he is. Look at that. Lovely offload on the inside. Running the good line is Nishan Pereira. And the half time score Sri Lanka 14, Chinese Taipei 7. Sri Lanka, well, looking the more confident and slick of the two outfits. Potentially the scoreline not quite indicating that. And we all know that Sri Lanka has a lot more to give than they're showing here early in the tournament. It's just taking the opportunity to run themselves in. So wind has picked up now, just a, just a nod or two. And he's actually begun to swing round and is pretty much blowing almost across field. And that'll be a consideration for the coaches and the players. As it stiffens up, and makes throwing into the line outs, well, just that little bit more difficult. Chinese flag in full effect, as uh, some of the Chinese fans. And Chinese Taipei get ready to come back. Get this second half underway, hopefully with a score. To the Sri Lankan fans watching their boys from North Sri Lanka. Hey, 
The restart coming back, knock forward is the call. Shalaka taking the early advantage off that. So, Chinese Taipei starting strongly. Crouch. Watch Shalaka make the bulk of the play. Uh, question from Samar. Is Korea playing their full side or a young side like they did in the first leg? Well, they have made some changes. Still, would hardly be what you consider maybe the very top Korean lineup. Of course, it's all about who's available. Sri Lanka, this tremendous play. There's a man on the inside. Great step by Kevin Dixon. Look at that. Well, that's an ankle breaker, that one. Great left foot step. And Kevin Joseph. Tries converted, 21 points to seven. Sri Lanka just easing into the control seat of their opening fixture of the weekend. Peter Wood trained or coached Sri Lankan side. Push wide, Chinese Taipei. Pick and go. Chinese Taipei going on with it. This is good, strong, robust play. Well, the man from Chinese Taipei, they step in. That's a good work. That's some good work by Pinyi. Pinyi goes again. Ball back. The line is open. And it's a. Whoa, is it a try? It is a try. Ultimately scored by Liu Yao Cheng. He's taken a bit of a ding with it. But that try was set up with good support play by Chinese Taipei. Working the inside line all day today. And this time it turns up some good dividends. 21 points to 12. He's taking a bit of bark off as well. That's what happens now in the big game. Robin's racing. Conversion attempt started off pretty well. And it just faded away. It's the try scorer. Gingerly heads back towards the bench. And I'm sure... All you'll get is a band aid and a message from Mum. Time off. Blown just as they make some changes. I imagine that will be a blood bin for Liu. And we're off and racing. Three minutes remaining and. Opening fixture for Sri Lanka and Chinese Taipei, game number seven in the tournament so far. Sri Lanka has got to get out of the way, the Chinese Taipei player, and he does pretty urgently and just in a nick of time. Yeah, the Sri Lankans test Chinese Taipei's willingness for its knockdown and it was an outside position. Sri Lanka, quite rightly, just slowing the tempo of the game down. No 
You know, the best thing they can do is just control the rate of play. It will frustrate the Chinese Taipei side and be looking to somehow close out those points any way they can. Well, the well, Sri Lankan side. Very, very good, very experienced. I know this Simmons rugby will. Time on. Two minutes remain. Cleanly taken by Sri Lanka. Fit into the midfield. Straight away they go side to side. They begin stretching the Chinese Taipei defence to the point where that is the final result. A well crafted try by the Tuskers. And it's Riza Rafai Dean. The try scorer, great from the line out. They spread it one way, they brought it back to the halfway. Unfortunately, Chinese Taipei overcommitted. The defence moved off, left a lot of room on that far side in front of the umbrella stand. And as a result, Sri Lanka cruised one in. Conversion unsuccessful. Twenty-six points to twelve. Ball loose for Chinese Taipei. Straight through the middle. How on earth has he lost that forward? Yes, he has. Well, handling errors have really kept the Chinese Taipei team from competing as well as they could. But the Sri Lankan side here this weekend, they're classy. Big shove from Chinese Taipei, but it only results in a penalty for Sri Lanka. And Sri Lanka now full of running, as they always are. It's a good, strong run by this try scorer, Rafa Dean. Now they loosen it up. Dima, number 11, gets the ball back on the inside. Now they charge off. Chinese Taipei forced to cover and make tackles. It's been extraordinarily tiring chasing after the Sri Lankan side. They know how to use the ball well. 14 minutes is up. It's a yellow card offence for... Chinese Taipei. They're down to six. Full time is off. The chip and case. Oh, I'm not too sure if that was the right tactic from Chinese Taipei. And if I wasn't too sure before, I was absolutely right. It was not the right idea. Good heavens above. And Sri Lanka going for a late one. After reducing Chinese Taipei to six players, some panic stricken defence has led to another seven points, and it's 38 points to 12. There's the chip through. Now, if you're going to kick it, kick it. Look at that. Well, well, well. Not entirely sure whether I've seen a try like that on any rugby pitch anywhere in the world to be honest final score 33 points to 12 Sri Lanka dominating Chinese Taipei here in the opening game of the opening men's bracket at Namdong Asiad Stadium in Incheon China coming up next an absolute crack up. Just enough time for you to go away and put on the kettle. 
Maybe crack open another back at the packet of biscuits. We return more International Sevens Rugby from Korea in the Asia Rugby Seven Series. Here it is, next up, Hong Kong taking on Korea. This will be a beauty. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's Hong Kong taking on Korea in the Asia Rugby 7 Series. Finalists in Hong Kong at their home tournament. We're disappointed to go down against Japan. Two, Mike Coverdale. Seven, the captain, Ben Rimini. Number 11, Jamie Hood. Toby Fan at number eight, Yu Cam Shing, the stalwart out wide. Meanwhile, for Korea, it's a different looking lineup, isn't it? We saw them last week, but now number seven, Yang Yongmin, Park Yun Yong, and Andre Kukard. Suguru Kamamuta of Japan, a referee, and it is Korea with a revved up squad taking on the Asian Games gold medalist, Hong Kong, Jamie Hood, number 11 out of the Hong Kong Football Club, takes it and scrambles up the midfield, Toby Fenn, now finds Rimini and out to Kaduli, or oh, no, that's Yu Kam Shing. Wide the Hong Kong side drag Korea, Fenn, Rimini, Hood, they're firing them at will. Lee, ball back in, the running coming in from Max Woodward there, the powerful figure of Woodward. Now Coverdale, one of the best when he's on his game, Mike Coverdale, there's not many better. Woodward brings it back in hard and straight. Kadu Lee is there, Jamie Hood feeds. Coverdale goes wide, Fenn goes wider. Rimini, the wraparound with Fenn, He'll look to put away Yu Kam Shing. He doesn't. He wraps around himself. And has he got it down? He has. Toby Fenn opens the scoring for Hong Kong. And that is how the Asian Games gold medalists get the job done early against Korea. Fourth try in the series. For the tearaway loose forward from the Valley Club in Hong Kong. And Toby Fenn. Dots one down. Well, opening play for Hong Kong. We've had all the possession. Korea have had a pretty good look at them. Haven't been able to get the ball. Rimini from out wide. Left foot a drop goal. It's not successful. Hong Kong five. Korea nil. Well, they made no secret of the fact last time they brought with them a development side Korea to Hong Kong. This team they you wouldn't exactly put it in that class. Rimini's restart is taken spectacularly by Finn. <laughs> and now they whip it wide. Rimini, he's looking for space. Flat ball across. Max Woodward has to take it off the heels, but they've done well to control it, Hong Kong, and now they're in space again. Hood, Yu Cam Shang into space. He takes it into contact, and Jamie Hood flies in to help secure the ball. Toby Fenn, Kadu Lee, Rimini. Coverdale now challenges the line, the big Fenn. He takes it into contact. Woodward blows it out. Rimini, it's a foot race for the corner, and the skipper goes in for Hong Kong. 10-0. Well, Ben Rimini, he's very much the glue 
for this team. Just likes to chime in with little touches. Some genuine concern now for the Korean player down back on the halfway line on the far side of the pitch as we take in these closing pitches. A great flowing movement from Hong Kong created the opportunity for Ben Rimini to scamper for the line, and he did. And he does because that's how he runs. Rimini's conversion attempt from out wide. Probably wouldn't want to see the replay on that. Now, this poor bloke went head to head with Toby Fenn at the kickoff. And unfortunately, he has come off second best. So just watch this now. He's taken a shoulder to the side of the head. Yep. Um, which in most walks of life would see Toby Fenn hauled away in a police car. However, I'm just joking, ladies and gentlemen. But, uh, here he is. I imagine he might be getting a few of the old smelling salts, but under the new HIA protocols, look at that. Yeah, a glancing shot, and he's taken a pretty hefty blow, this chap. And, um, well, if they offered him the blue card, I don't even think you get offered the blue card. You just get shown it, don't you? Looks like the player is in touch and is he off the field? I think he may well be. I don't know his official status, but there's no time left to try and figure it out. No, he's definitely off and Hong Kong are definitely on fire at the moment as Rimini. They speed it out again to Coverdale and he just about gets clear. He's Played again, released the ball, gathered it in, went again. Referee has blown him up, though. And Hong Kong lead 10 points to nil, but they look threatening every time they're near the ball. Korea are able now to venture down inside the Hong Kong half for what might even be the first time in the match. They set up a line out restart inside the Hong Kong 22. And Korea into the midfield on the outside, Jang. He's wrapped up by Jamie Hood. Spin it back and into it is Park. Yun Yong Park. Yeah. Massive frame of a man. It's Kim now. A quick tap. 12 is John. He takes on the line and he may have he can't roll over and get it down, or can he? No, he cannot. It's held up and so. With their first serious attack inside the Hong Kong half. Korea light up the visitors and put them on notice. Ten points may not be enough. In fact, the way they just took 50 yards off them, ten points will not be enough. 70 seconds left in the first half for these two teams and Look at this run. I'll tell you, I'm pretty sure that'll be, to use an old Kiwi term, that'll put the willies up the Hong Kong side. They go again now. Hong Kong, show, go, straight for the line. That's five points. One Yong Kim trots one straight up the middle for the home side, and they take five. And with this kick to come, it should be pretty straightforward. Yes, it's a seven point play and Korea turn up the blowtorch on the Asian Games gold medalist. It's 10-7. Hong Kong with 20 seconds left to play in the first half. Well, welcome to Korea. Look at this standing start and he's just got it going. And the only thing that can stop him is, well, a try.
Terrific play from Yang. Yes. Half time. Hong Kong 10. Korea 7. And this is an outstanding opening seven minutes in this game. The final game of the men's bracket here today before we go back to the ladies. And there's some pretty good anticipation in the stands. They're looking on with real interest. Why wouldn't they be? Hong Kong coach Paul Johns just letting his fellas know come on boys get on task meanwhile in the Korean huddle Ooh, looks fairly confident so it should they kept the lid on Hong Kong Social media time, Asia Rugby on Facebook. You can find us at Asia.rugby. Come and join the fray. And on Instagram, Asia Rugby Live. This is probably one of my favourite channels on my Instagram app. There's the Asia Rugby Live. And yes, speaking of which, we're dialing up some social media right here, right now. On Twitter at Asia Rugby, you can follow us. And kids, ask your parents for permission first, please. Just, I think just been granted right there. As we come back, second half action. Well, it's all to play for. This is a beauty, ladies and gentlemen. This is exactly what the doctor ordered. Hong Kong, three points ahead of Korea. And now, first knock on by Korea, Hong Kong get the ball. One of the strengths of the Hong Kong side is Coach. tremendous amount of experience that they've had, or well, they do have tight situations. They've had plenty of them in the past. Hong Kong pick and go through Yu Cam Sheng. He'll catch them all asleep. And the old master fires one into Korea. Almost from a standing start. Yu Cam Sheng. Well, it's hard to believe this guy didn't grow up playing rugby. He is just an absolute athlete, an absolute natural. But his form over the last couple of seasons has just gone from strength to strength. And Yu Cam Sheng, he scored in the gold medal final for his beloved Hong Kong team. And he is always the last man on the pitch to stop fighting for Hong Kong. Conversion attempt unsuccessful. Hong Kong lead, 15 points to seven. A very timely score off the back of half time for Hong Kong. And they're away again. The chip out, really, it's a lazy 9-iron, isn't it, from Rimini to get things underway. But Korea now, ball in hand, and looking dangerous when they do have it in hand. Big defence, tackle missed, and away he runs. Jang down the far side, and this man can motor. There's no doubt about it. Well, it's... Punch for punch at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. These are two teams who are really lighting each other up. They've got extraordinary pace out wide. We all know the, the Korean sports teams are incredibly explosive. That is a given. Sometimes they get beaten on the composure stakes. Sometimes they just get beaten on the board. 15-12. There's the kick. And it misses. 15, 12, three points. The margin. The Korean fans standing at the ready. 
The standard bearers here today. Look at him go. Jane gets on the outside. He's just waved off Ben Remini and gone straight in. Back live with the action. And the restart sequence ends up with an opportunity for Korea to take the ball inside the Korean half as the Kowloon flyer Jack Neville makes his way into the match. He checks in for Jamie Hood. One of the veterans in the Hong Kong lineup. Oh, what teams wouldn't Five. pay for experience like Jamie Hood's got? Set. He's been in tight Hold situations time and time again. Korea now spin and turn and take it out wide. Good direct play as it's straightened up by Kim. Chang goes wide. Chang pushes it wider. Makes its way all the way out. Hong Kong through Max Woodward. Stop play in its tracks. Korea now. Chang with Lloyds. Conquilard. They push it even wider. The try scorer. Number five, Kim. Six is Kim. Hong Kong need to track. Oh, an error out there by Park. And it's turned the ball over with a penalty to boot. Mike Coverdale knows the idea is just to tie ho, just relax. The clock might be their best ally at the moment, Hong Kong. Ben Rimini knocks it down. The umbrella stand touchline. And Hong Kong will take the ball. Kadu lead to throw. It's a nail biter first up for the Hong Kong fans. They would have come into the tournament with a fair amount of confidence, and rightly so. And this Korean team have been selected for one purpose and one purpose only, and that's to, well, I would say, beat Japan. Now, Hong Kong, Rimini flows it. Neville goes wide. Yu Kam Shing on Jang. He manages to get a hand in the bread basket and tip him up. And so it's lost forward. And he knows he's disappointed about it. That could have been the straw that broke the camel's back from you, Cam Sheen. Look at this desperation here. As Yongman Jang gets the old hand in the cookie jar and tears the lid off it. Much to the displeasure of the Hong Kong team. So, covered all off. Rafe Morrison on, Yu Kam Shing off, Hood back on. Approach. Bye. Set. Quick hook and heel. Almost coming down to the final 60 seconds now. Danger times. Any time this guy gets the ball for career, it's danger for everybody else. Playing with such confidence off their own line now, this Korean team. The ball has put Kokolard into the clear. A long rangey fullback in 15. He comes trotting into the line. Now, Korea, listen to the Korean fans raise their voices. They want to bring their players home. Jang on Neville. Jang beats Neville, but he trips himself up. They go for the ball through Jamie Hood. It's a penalty to Hong Kong. Well, They've got themselves off the hook, Hong Kong, and it's courtesy of their eighth defender. I don't know how Jang ended up on the ground, but gravity is a cruel, cruel thing. As we look, now he was gone. It's all over there. He's done Jamie Hood cold there, but somehow he's just not had the strength to stay up and that's not a person who's dejected that's a person who looks like they might have hurt themselves Namuk Kim he's looking well hot bothered fatigued exhausted probably a little bit upset as well my word 
Well, a bit of luck for Hong Kong. And the closing moments of the match they have been physically and sorely tested. Look at this. Great ball. Jack Neville caught no, flat-footed. No, no, no. That doesn't happen very often. And he's been done and dusted by Jongbin Jang there. Ball in. Boy Hood, they've spun it wide. Remedy goes wider. Jackie Neville on the double round. Now he puts the gas on. He can fly. Woodward into space. He floats a great ball away to Max Denmark. Now you want to talk about pace. What about this guy? Ultimately dragged down and a good tackle from Kim. But still, Hong Kong with the ball and they charge the line. They'll want to finish this one off with a statement if they can. Spot tackle on Denmark. He tries to backdoor it. It comes out for the try scorer. One young Kim and it's, well, it's back to action stations for Hong Kong. They've got to defend now. We're in the death. So all the meters will be on the red. The rev counters will be on the red, and the Koreans' eyes will be seeing red. Fire, they fire it into the midfield. Korea looking for some space on this Hong Kong side. Denmark stood up on the inside. Morrison knocks it loose. The ball goes forward, and the whistle goes up. And the referee blows full time, and both teams are reduced to sitting on their haunches as Korea put the blowtorch on the Asian gold medalists like you would not believe. What about this one? To the absolute death, Morrison's tackle. Well, that is literally and figuratively by the skin of their teeth, Hong Kong. 15, Korea 12, that's the final score. And things in the 852, well, they'll be a little bit nervy. We will return, ladies and gentlemen, at 250, roughly 26 minutes time to continue this tournament. These are the closing pitches. We'll see you again. 250, 10 to 3, ladies and gentlemen, from Namdong ASEAN Stadium in Incheon, Korea. It's day one of the Asia Rugby 7 Series in Korea. Join us again soon.